You probably know me as Shonduras. You know I love to travel, skateboard, snowboard, and that I have huge muscles. Okay, maybe not the muscles. But in the past year, I've made incredible friends all over the world. Let me show you where it all started. This cute baby is me. My name is Sean McBride. I was born with a hole in my heart. The first three days of my life sucked, but eventually the doctors got everything fixed. Life was great for a couple years. I even won a baby contest. I was a chubby chunk of awesomeness. But life always has its surprises. Here I go. Unfortunately for me, my parents got a divorce. I think I was only like two or three when it happened. It was really hard for me to understand why, and it was one of the most difficult challenges for me all growing up. My mom eventually found my stepdad. He turned out to be a really nice guy. Every time he would come visit, I would give him a rubber band from my collection. After a couple months, he had a lot of rubber bands, and they got married. We had tons of fun growing up. I remember one time I convinced my sisters to play Fear Factor. One of the challenges that I made them do was put tadpoles on their eyes. Looking back, it was probably a bad idea. My dad got remarried as well, to poop. Well, not seriously, but my stepmom was insane. They had three cute girls as well, and I would visit my dad every other weekend all growing up. He would always take me to the arcade or to the lake. We always had fun. He was going to college and working graveyards, but he would never miss a weekend. My dad and I are a lot alike, and I loved every minute spent with him. When I was 14, I decided to go live with my dad so I could get to know him better. It didn't work out so well, though, because of my crazy stepmom. Well, some of it might have been my fault. I remember one time I found out she smoked cigarettes, so I had this amazing idea. Okay, it was a horrible idea. But basically, I decided to put a firecracker in one of her cigarettes. I put it back in the pack and actually forgot about my amazing idea until one day, <laughs> she found the firecracker. Yeah, after that, I moved back in with my mom, and luckily, my dad got remarried to someone who didn't suck. Growing up, I always had a sense of adventure. Anything that seemed exciting or extreme, that was my jam. First, it was rollerblading, but I quickly decided that was stupid. Next, I did BMX with my best friend Eric Schneider, but why pedal when you can have a motor? I was all about motocross for a couple years. I even got pretty good at it. But eventually, I found my true love, skateboarding. I was hooked. Skateboarding was a creative outlet for all my energy. It was so fun. I got good pretty quick because I skated with really good friends. I would travel around and do contests. I rode with Christian Sareka and Tyson Bowerbank. They actually went on to be pro skaters. Now is the part of the story where I try and grow up. You know, get responsible. I don't think I tried very hard though. My first job working at a car shop changing oil didn't last very long. I was always distracted. And that is when I headed out on the adventure of a lifetime. Something I'd been wanting to do since I was a little kid. I was headed to Honduras to serve an LDS mission. I was there for two years. I basically just helped people strengthen their families and improve their relationships with God. I absolutely loved it. I would email home whenever I had the chance. I wanted to share this adventure with family and friends. I never wanted to forget these best days of my life. My mom kept all the emails in this book and it shows worms living in my leg, playing with parrots, monkeys, some pretty crazy sunburns. Oh, and of course, I still was addicted to cereal. Sitting on the airplane flying home, I remember promising myself I would never stop trying to impact people's lives in a positive way. It was really the only thing I wanted to do. Back home, I started going to college. I took pretty heavy semesters so I could just grind through it as fast as possible. Oh, and I also got a job at a snowboard shop. Yeah, that was rad. The next couple years of my life could be explained in one sentence. Study hard, work hard, and play hard. I spent every day possible just shredding the mountain and then studied all night. Or sometimes I just continued snowboarding all night. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to be when I grew up, but that's when I decided I just wasn't going to grow up. This is the part of the story where I fall in love. This is Jenny. She was incredibly beautiful, could always make me laugh, and she crushed it on a snowboard. 
Together, we had adventure after adventure. Eventually, that led to backpacking through Europe for an entire summer. I shot video of the entire experience. We were perfect for each other. Our fun together continued. We both graduated college. We got married. We even got wiener dogs! By this point, I was running the snowboard shop. I saw the power of e-commerce, selling things on the internet, and I wanted to learn. My first instinct was to sell penny boards, these small little skateboards I saw becoming super trendy. But first I decided to seek guidance from a business owner and friend. Sitting there eating pancakes, he asked me what my business strategy would be for driving traffic. How would I find those online customers? That is when I found the power of social media and my new target demographic. At that time, moms were just taking over Facebook. They loved commenting, they loved socializing online, they loved Facebook. With the new business plan, I created an online jewelry boutique. All marketing was done through Facebook, the posts were engaging, and I would call upon the Facebook followers to help name each necklace. There were constant opportunities to interact with the Facebook page, win free jewelry, and the boutique started growing fast. Okay, let me explain. This is me. I ran the Facebook under Jenny's name, because you know, weird if a guy's running a jewelry store. All that jewelry was imported from overseas. This is Lily Bell. She was an online assistant that I hired from the Philippines. She helped me with ordering product, keeping inventory. She was awesome. This is Tyler. The boutique started selling so much that I decided to partner with him and his warehouse. They would receive and ship all the product. And this is my bank account. I put every last penny into this project. The next couple months I continued running the board shop while focusing all extra time and energy on this jewelry boutique. And it worked! Wow. Okay, this is going to be a long YouTube video. Is anyone even still watching? I'm, I'm just gonna need a bowl of cereal real quick, hold on. Okay, back to the story. At this point, Snapchat is invented, but I have no idea. That is when I get a random call to interview for my dream job. I'm offered the position to be a rep for some of my favorite snowboard and skateboard brands. I now have three jobs, I never sleep, and eventually I have to leave the board shop and sell my jewelry boutique. But it's all worth it. The next year was one of the greatest of my entire life. It was a combination of traveling, working hard, and lots of boarding. My new boss also happened to be the smartest, most rad guy ever, and I learned a ton from him. Now I find out about Snapchat. My sisters recommended it to me so I could share all of my fun new experiences with them. I download the app, and as I begin sharing these adventures with my family, I quickly realized the potential of the platform. I saw a new space where I could creatively build a community, similar to how I had done it on Facebook with the jewelry boutique, only this time I wouldn't try and sell anything, I would just share a message. I made it a goal to post one Snapchat every day that would help someone to smile, or just escape their problems. The more I posted, the more my little community of Snapchat friends would grow. When Snapchat released the My Story, it was a game changer. I was now able to share complete adventures and really tell a story on the app. Within the first month of stories, I had taken my Snapchat friends flying in a helicopter, we were at glaciers in Alaska, we watched my dog lick a lamp and find a dog genie, and I took everyone on a skate surf trip with a bunch of pros. The crazy amount of new friends and all the positive responses I was just getting kept motivating me to push the creativity of the app. It was so fun! Searching the internet, I found M. Platko. He was also getting creative on Snapchat. I sent him an email and coordinated the first ever Snapchat collab. My idea was to have our Snapchat fans participate in a crazy cross-platform boxing match. It would all live on Snapchat, but eventually go to Instagram, Twitter, etc. We received thousands of snaps within an hour. The engagement was insane. This level of engagement triggered an idea. I started reaching out to brands to show how Snapchat could be a relevant marketing tool. The first brand to respond with interest was Disney. Together we put together the very first branded Snapchat story. They sent me out to their 24 hour summer kickoff. I created a fun adventure about trying to find my Disney side and it turned out amazing. My audience loved it. Creating Snapchat stories at Disney quickly became a thing 
and they were one of the first brands to be given a custom geo filter on Snapchat. From there, I continued reaching out and working with some of my favorite brands, like Samsung, Red Bull, and Taco Bell. My goal was to not try and sell anything to my Snapchat friends, but rather tell them the brand's story in a creative and engaging way. When I wasn't partnering with a brand, I continued my personal adventures and message of living life to the fullest. Okay, so that's how all this crazy Snapchat stuff got started, but if I had to describe in one word how it all ended up working, it would be friendship. The relationship that I created with all my Snapchat friends was incredible. Since the very beginning, I've tried to see every tweet, respond to every single Instagram post, and it's basically impossible at this point, but I've tried to open every single Snapchat sent to me. It's just really fun being able to see life through the eyes of my friends all over the world. And as for me and my life right now, things have never been better. If you're watching this video right now on release, it means Jenny and I just had our first baby. Like, I can't even imagine what that's going to feel like, but my body gets all tingly just thinking about it. I want to be the best dad ever. But don't worry, our crazy Snapchat adventures are going to continue. I've actually been uploading all my favorite stories to my YouTube. I know it's fun to experience the Snapchats in the moment as they're happening, but I also want you to be able to enjoy them forever and to be able to share all our fun with others. That being said, I'm trying to focus a lot more on my YouTube as well. It's a more permanent way to share my messages and fun videos. I would hugely appreciate your support by subscribing. I'm going to make it so if you click this square box thingy, it will subscribe. So click it, please. That would help a lot. All right, I'm assuming you just subscribed. Thank you. Um, you can also hit me at the Twitter, Instagram, or my new favorite, Beam. Everything is at Shonduras. There it is. Life is crazy. I would love to make another one of these in 10 years and see where I'm at. I imagine with the addition of a baby, things are just going to get better. Um, if I could leave you guys with just one final thought, I guess it would be to just find what you're passionate about and get after it. Oh, and I can't remember if I said this, but please subscribe. Thanks.